All right, guys, I want to share some of my favorite router bits in the wood shop, starting from the plain Jane bits like carbide tip bearing guided bits, all the way up to solid carbide spiral and even fancy compression bits. Stick around, we'll get into the topic. Like most woodworkers, I started out with a lot of straight cutting bits, and although they do have bearings and they're carbide tipped, the straight cutting edge has just a certain action to it. It's fine on straight grain, but if you approach grain that has a changing direction or going around end grain, um, some pattern routing maybe, you know, even a really good bit that's a, a bearing guided straight bit will have its limitations as, as far as what sort of changing grain direction it can handle. And you can get away with it as long as you do a very light cut. So if you're bandsawing something first and then adhering it to a template to pattern route it, you want to get very close to the line. I'm talking a 16th inch is the amount that you'd be able to remove with even a really good quality carbide tip straight bit. So enter spiral bits. Now, instead of being carbide tip, they're actually solid carbide construction. This version, we have a double bearing on the tip and you got that nice down cut action. And so that has several applications where that's the bit that you would choose. But really comparing any solid carbide spiral bit to any straight cutting bit is kind of a hands down win for the spirals. Um, that's not to say the straight bits don't have their place. Um, I started with them and I still have a few in my collection that I use all the time. For instance, these short length pattern bits. Uh, there are situations where short length pattern routing bits are really the thing to have. Where these come into play for me is when I'm using dado jigs. You get the bearing against the jig to guide your work and you can only have a certain length of cutting action there. So half inch, three quarter, and one inch length. Uh, let's say all you had was a one inch length bearing guided bit. Be a lot of applications where I couldn't do the work that I do because I need the half inch or the three quarter depending on the thickness of the jig I'm using. So this combination of these three bits really is a help to me in the wood shop. I would start any basic router collection with these bits. If you're not ready to pop on a solid carbide large diameter bit, you know they're a little expensive if they're half inch diameter or larger, you can just jump into the game with a quarter inch spiral bit. This is still 100% solid carbide, but because there's less material involved, it'll just be a lot more affordable bit. This is a great plunging bit. I mean, you compare the plunging action of something like this versus a straight bit, uh, there's no contest. You definitely want to use the bit geometry of a spiral. It makes it really easy to plunge and the router won't fight you. So as long as you're within reason on what you're trying to remove, these are a great bit. And I always have at least two or three of those in the shop. Moving up to an ultimate flush trim bit. These are actually large diameter, seven eighths inch on the diameter, inch and one eighth on the cutting length. Bearing guided bit, of course and the action here is a compression. They are solid carbide construction, but instead of just being an up cut or a down cut, they have a compression action. So it does a little bit of both from the top and bottom, and it just almost ensures that you're gonna get a clean cut top and bottom. And that's true whether you're talking about hardwood material or veneer stock like plywood. So this particular one is the UDP 9112 the P standing for plunge because it does have a plunge tip. And that large diameter to me is almost like putting a helical cutter on your router. You know, we all know the advantages of a helical cutter head on your jointer or planer. Well, this is just a mini helical cutter head for your router. Another version I've been using for quite some time is the UDC 9112. And that's the C stands for combination just because it has a pair of bearings. You've got top end, bottom bearing. It just gives you more options as far as how the bearing can contact a template to do your pattern routing. Uh, the only limitation is you wouldn't have the plunge action, 
but I would say if you're going to start with one of these ultimate flush trimming bits, this would be the one I would go with. Again, it's the UDC 9112. Just because of how flexible this is in terms of the way you can use it with pattern routing and flush trimming. If I was going to get a second ultimate flush trim bit, it would be this one, the UDP 9112. Adding that plunge action is really important for some applications. You don't always need this large of a diameter for plunging applications, but what's great is to have a flush trimming bit that's this wide. You have that 7 8 inch width. That compared to a small diameter bit is night and day as far as the cut quality you'll get. You don't have to be as careful about limiting the amount of material removed, although I think that's always advisable to trim it just as tight as you can before you make that final flush trimming pass. Well, what router bit collection would be complete without a selection of roundover bits? The one I find myself using most is this 1 8 inch roundover bit. It just eases the edges, makes it a little nicer on the hands, and still gives an appropriate look for the sort of things I like to build, like arts and crafts style furniture. I get these in two varieties, a half inch diameter that I run in the router table, and then I always keep one with a quarter inch diameter on hand so I can use it in my handheld compact router. Moving up to some of the larger diameter solid carbide spiral bits, this is a half inch diameter solid carbide spiral bit with a, a double height bearing on the tip and this is a down cut spiral and this one's really useful if your template is on the bottom you get a perfectly clean edge on the top which is really important if you're doing finish work in hardwoods or using delicate veneers like plywood and then there's the big daddies the ultimate flush trim bits now this bit is new to my collection it's really great because we can do plunge cuts with that when necessary. Um, this combination bit has been in my collection for a while. I've been using that for about a year. And to be honest with you, it still cuts as well as the day I took it out of the package. Been really impressed with the longevity of this bit. Although it wasn't a surprise to me because I've used a lot of white side solid carbide spiral bits and they've performed in a similar manner. There's also this small diameter carbide bit with bearing on the tip that I use quite often. Sometimes I'll use it as part of a two or three step process to cut out openings in furniture projects. Usually I'll start with a larger diameter bit and then finish up with this small diameter bit to get into a tighter radius corner. Of course we'll link up in the description box all the products that we featured in today's video. All right, guys, that's the roundup on all my favorite router bits, including Whiteside's Ultimate Flush Trim Series. Also, look for my reviews on Whiteside Plus, Industrial Saw Blades, and Dado Blade. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.